Hello darlings, I'm Matt. I'm Megan. And welcome to College Uncomplicated's Financial Aid Bootcamp. So last week we went over some very important financial aid vocabulary, but it doesn't mean anything if you don't know what to do with it. If you haven't watched that video, we highly suggest you watch that first and then this one. This week we'll be going over the financial aid timeline. Ah! Before we get into the timeline, we wanted to share a couple simple rules about applying to financial aid. The first one is don't let the tuition of a university limit you from actually applying there. We know that private universities tend to have larger price tags, and some students choose not to apply to them out of fear of not being able to afford it. But private universities also tend to give really amazing financial aid packages that for some times, and for some students, it actually is cheaper to go to one of these private schools than it is to a large state school. The same goes for applying for financial aid. A lot of people actually don't fill out the FAFSA because they think that they won't receive anything, but the reality is that most people qualified for at least some type of aid, and it's really good to keep your options open. Secondly, in this timeline, we're not including applying for scholarships. However, you should start applying as early as you can. Some scholarships are available during your junior year of high school, and a lot are available during your senior year. So apply, apply, apply. And photocopy everything. Seriously. Financial aid offices sometimes lose stuff, so it's always great to have copies in case you need to send it again. And now on to the BS de resistance. Applying for financial aid. By fall of your senior year, calculate your EFC. Or your expected family contribution. You can do this by going to bigfuture.collegeboard.com. This calculator basically asks you a bunch of the same questions that the FAFSA does. It asks you about your living situation, whether you're an independent or a dependent student, ask you about family size, parents' income, as well as your tax information. And it will use that to calculate how much your family should contribute to college. The next step is to fill out your FAFSA. More like GAGSA. <laughs> I said it with a straight face. You're the one who lost it. And I never say things with a straight face. That's saying something. I know, tis a necessary evil to be eligible for state and federal aid. The FAFSA comes out every year on January 1st and it's best to fill it out as soon as possible. Ideally, you would use your parents' tax information for that year, but you can provide estimates. Also, pay attention to schools' financial aid priority deadlines. For most schools, that's sometime in early March or mid-March, usually March 1st or March 15th. But realize, you need to give time for FAFSA to actually be processed, both by the federal government and then by the university that you send it to. So we suggest that you fill it out no later than one week before the priority deadline. Some schools may require you to fill out the CSS profile as well. These will likely be private schools with their own private sources of financial aid. Also be aware of the fact that there is a fee to file the CSS profile, and you file it through the College Board website. So if a school requires you to fill out the CSS profile, make sure you fill out both the CSS profile and the FAFSA. Both forms need to be turned in by the school's priority financial aid deadline in order for you to be considered for financial aid. And as always, don't forget to photocopy everything. Everything. The next step is you're actually going to receive your student aid report, or the SAR. The SAR summarizes all the information that you provided on the FAFSA and also gives you your family's EFC. Now when you get your student aid report, be sure to check it thoroughly for mistakes because sometimes they do happen. In the event that you see a mistake that you made when filling it out, make a correction, which is basically where you go through and change the mistake on the FAFSA. Wait, what? They make mistakes on your financial aid? Well, yeah, it's the federal government. Bazing! Also, if you look on your SAR and there's a star next to your EFC, that means that you have been pinged for verification. And basically, that means that you need to provide additional documentation to prove your family's income. But we'll get to that later. And next, you get your acceptance letters. Woo. Then you'll get your financial aid awards letters, which basically say, hey, come to my college because I'm offering you this amount of money. Therefore, you need to wait until you've received all of your financial aid letters so you can do a proper comparison of what each college is offering you. Also remember not only to compare the tuition prices of each college, but to compare the cost of attendance. That means tuition, room and board, miscellaneous prices, etc. So after looking at your financial aid package, if you feel the package isn't enough, send in a financial aid appeal to each of the universities. 
parentheses. This is going to require documentation that proves the circumstances that you listed on FAFSA have changed. Trust me, this might sound like a slightly tedious process, but it does help. I've seen students get upwards of $5,000 additional dollars to attend a public university. Decisions deadlines will be in early May, and you will need to officially accept your enrollment as well as your financial aid offer. Then that's it! You're done! Up top! Remember, Megan, FAFSA is a yearly process. Your life circumstances may change, so you're going to have to fill out FAFSA every year in order to get it. That sucks. Yep. So that's that, how to apply for financial aid. Make sure to like the video if you liked it, as well as leave questions in the comments if you have any questions. Also, be sure to like College Uncomplicated on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Pinterest at College Uncomp. And don't forget to subscribe in order to get more videos from our financial aid bootcamp. I'm Megan. And I'm Matt. Later. Bye. The next major term that you need to know is cost of attendance, or COA. The cost of attendance is basically the estimated amount that a student usually pays to attend a university. This could include things like tuition, room and board, books and supplies, hidden fees, required fees, transportation, and personal expenses.